right now we're gonna go to this Buya Alpine rig, which is kind of like a mini A rig. And if you've seen some of my bite of the day videos, I've caught uh, quite a few seven pounders actually. It seems to catch a lot of seven pounders. That's a good fish. Oh, that's a good one. got these four little blades and then a straight wire coming back and then it's got a piece of little uh, like wire leader it's actually a cable and then a little tiny swivel and a little clip and you can put on whatever bait you want on the back and it just kind of turns it into an a-rig just kind of bend these up and so I really have a lot of confidence confidence in this bait I've had several of them these wires will break though they're really thin and I don't trust this little clip and this little pull this little swivel on here and I also don't like having the bait that far back so what we're gonna do is we're gonna be putting this river to sea bait on an EWG weighted swim bait hook right here it's not only gonna look good it's gonna be weedless um, or at least mostly weedless. You can still catch weeds on all these little appendages and anywhere where there's a little sharp piece of metal. Um, but it looks like I forgot the hook, so I'll be right back. All right, found the hook. It's a little uh, VMC uh, swim bait hook. Uh, what is this? I can't quite read, but it's not a very heavy one. Uh, and I switched the VNC screw keeper out for an owner one i just happen to have this hook and i order larger screw keepers i like the owner one so i put them on all my swim bait hooks so there's the hook there's the bait and here's the a rig so first thing there's a little piece of um plastic shrink wrap here where's my little razor blade let's just cut this off Yeah, I saw this one day, I can't, I think at the local tackle shop, and I just was like, I like the idea, but the longer I put something on this little swivel, and I mean, it's just so light, and here in Florida, I mean, every any cast could be 10 pounds or greater. I just don't trust this little piece. This straight wire, I mean, it's pretty strong. I don't, I'm not worried about that. And I, I use this to throw around structure. Not like, I mean, I guess you could do that with a regular um, A-Rig, but this is just a little bit more, more, it's a little louder in terms of presentation than a regular spinnerbait, but it's definitely more subtle than a traditional larger A-Rig. And you can fit it into more heavily covered spots, especially rigging it with an EWG weedless hook. So there we go. There's the little screw or the little cable. It's just actually a uh, ferrule clipped on. So I'm getting rid of it altogether. There we go. So now we got the head of the bait. Yeah, one thing I don't like about this bait are all these little sharp ends. Um, like I was saying with the buzz bait, anything that sticks up or out can get caught. Just one little piece of grass and ruin your whole presentation. And so I'm just going to try to 
clip them, bend them down just a little bit more. I've even put, um, gone back and added my own shrink wrap over heat wrap tubing over these connections to try to cut down on stuff getting caught on them, but it doesn't really seem to help. So I haven't done it in a while. So just kind of trying to make it not quite as pointy. All right, so now what do we need? We need uh, split rings. Uh, here's split rings or swivel. Let's get rid of this. This is for later. We got a swivel. Let me get one more split ring. We need two split rings. These are Spro split rings are the same ones. Yeah. So this is super easy. You just get your split ring pliers and you just rig it up. The only thing that's kind of tricky is getting a split ring on swim bait hooks sometimes because they're pretty heavy gauge wire and it's hard to get a really big split ring. So if you're going for like a beefier split ring, you might not be able to get it through the eye of the hook. And I find these Spro, this is like a, I don't remember, a size three maybe. I don't know, split ring sizes still baffle me. I just go into the store and buy the ones that I think are the right size. But I know these are for over 50 pounds. I think they're a 60 pound split ring. So I haven't had one fail yet, especially not in this way. It's not a lot of leverage the fish can push on, put on it because it can move in all kinds of directions and there's going to be another one and then you have the line actually up here. So there's not a lot of ways for the bass to get leverage on it. Let's get the other split ring. Let's get it on the hook first. Like I said, this is the trickier operation of this is finding a split ring that fits and the hook that fit together without having to stretch your split ring out too big and then it not holding integrity. This combo seems to work. This VMC hook and these Spro rings. I've done it before. It's maybe the third or fourth time I've rigged one of these up like this. Either lost them or um, Eventually, especially if mudfish start hanging it, they can break off the wires. And once you're down the two, I just feel like you might as well get a new one going. I still have one in my box, but I want another one. Just trying to get all this, hold this all together and get this on the swivel, but the swivel is swiveling. It's doing its job. All right, there we go. And it's a better swivel than it came with little bearing tool. So yeah, look at that little rig right there. It's awesome. And like I was saying earlier, this River to Sea uh, swim bait, the D Walker is also silicone. So when I screw uh, the screw in, I'm gonna put a dab of silicone on it and it will fuse a little bit better with the silicone of the bait. Just a little dab. And I go up a size in the screw locks from what the hook would have come with, which also extends the life of your bait. It's one of the things I like about these silicone swim baits like this one and even, well, I guess that's really a swim bait, but bait by Live Target is they're way more durable than Plastisol, but they are harder to get a hook set through sometimes and you can't glue them really back together. The silicone helps glue to it, but it won't really glue it back together per se. There's my paper towels. All right, so then I'm just gonna rig this like a swim bait. This hook's a little big length. It's probably a four aught and it's a little big for this, but that's one of the problems with this bait is it's stiff, so it's hard to get hook penetration. So I like trying to get the hook a little further back there because most of the motion in this bait we need is in the tail. 
as long as the tail can keep thumping. The blades are doing so much work in the front, we don't really need as much of the actual baits side to side roll that you would want in say like a swim jig or just fishing it as a swim bait. So just line this, just line this up like you would any other swim bait to get it straight. It's a little short still. This hook's just slightly big for this bait. It still fits in the designed hook slot. But that's it. I'm gonna put one more dab of silicone around the nose of this bait just to kind of make it extra secure because that's usually where you get the failure failure on this is that the nose eventually will start to rip out or something will bite the tail off and then you just gotta put a new bait on. And you can put any swim bait on. I just start with this one because it lasts a little longer. And the lake I'm gonna fish this in, I feel like uh, the really big bass are eating the schooly bass, which are eating little bait fish that are about the size of this blade. And it's worked this color uh, by River to Sea is kind of almost like a bass color. It's a little, a little more transparent than a real bass, but it's got that green and kind of white color. But yeah, so then you can just adjust these blades however you want, and there you go. The Alpine rig uh, modified and then made weedless. This is, I'm excited to fish this again. Hang this over here as well. There we go, that's a good fish. And right there in the wind. Just fell out.